What's going on YouTube? So there are not many vehicles you can buy for 25K these days. However, we have found one of them. This is the new Mazda 3 Select Sport, a new trim level for 2024. And that's not all of the changes for 2024. So let's go ahead and get, get into all of the updates this year, as well as see just what this gives you for 25K. All right, so let's kick things off here under the hood for our spec dump. What you'll find is a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine on most models. This is making 191 horsepower and 186 pound feet of torque. You do have the available turbo engine and all models have a six speed automatic transmission, standard front wheel drive, optional all wheel drive on some of the trim levels. And then as far as your fuel economy is concerned, it sits at about 31 miles per gallon combined as tested today. And we're going to show you the performance of this model out on the road a little later on in this video. We're going to do things like get our signature sound level reading so that you can compare to all the rivals at carconfections.com. But let's go ahead and close up the hood because I think you're going to be really impressed with what the exterior is delivering for $25,000. Now you just heard me say that this has a pretty low price on it, but nobody is going to notice that when you pull up in this thing. Actually, they're gonna think you paid way more than that because you get a very premium look on board with the Mazda 3. Really, that goes for the whole lineup, but this new Select Sport trim level, I think really does a great job of bringing in the best characteristics of this model. So up in the front, you're gonna have that signature Mazda grille. You're still gonna get the chrome accent that's gonna run all down the bottom. And that chrome accent is gonna continue into what I think are excellent looking premium LED headlights. You'll be surprised to know that all the elements are gonna be LED inside of this unit. It's a very premium look to this and you even have the fading turn signal indicators. As we walk around to the rear, you continue to see that same sporty design. Yeah, and they didn't really change much for 2024 back here, but I don't think they needed to. This is one of the best looking compact sedans. It looks so, so premium. Now, one of those really premium elements are the taillights. So Drew's hopping inside and we're going to see if all three elements are LED. So we do have an LED brake light portion, LED reverse light and LED turn signal. And it even has that fading in and out animation. This taillight, guys, is more premium than a lot of luxury cars. As a matter of fact, I reviewed an Audi earlier this morning, and it didn't have all three elements as LED. So very impressive on a $25,000 car. Now, as we drop down to the lower area, you will notice that we have dual integrated exposed exhaust outlets. Uh, that's also a very rare feature for this segment, and that's across all versions of the Mazda 3. Now, moving on to our wheels, the very base trim level will come with a 16 inch alloy wheel. However, everything else comes with 18 inch alloys. Here with the Select Sport, when they changed it from Select to Select Sport, basically what they did was go from a kind of chrome or silver finish. Now you have the gloss black finish. Obviously that looks really nice when you pair that with the gloss black exterior and overall very sporty aesthetic. Moving up to our mirrors, we have a nice change for 2024. That's the fact that blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert are now standard on every single version of the Mazda 3. If you want heating, you do need to choose at least this Select Sport. Now here at the side of the Mazda 3, it comes in at an overall length of 183.5 inches, which is certainly a good size for this segment. I also want to point out we do have a little bit of chrome trim, which certainly looks good on this blacked out model. Now, as far as your safety systems are concerned, I want to talk about this because Mazda is including all four active safety features as standard equipment, in addition to, of course, like Drew mentioned earlier, blind spot monitoring now being standard equipment. So you're really going to have the entire gamut of safety features as standard. Very happy to see that, especially on a vehicle of this price tag. Only thing I'll point out is that if you choose that top end turbo, turbo premium plus trim level, you will get traffic sign recognition. But guys, that's going to wrap up the exterior design of this sleek Mazda 3. Let's see what you get on the inside because there are some improvements this year. But first, if you're new here, we're brothers and we've been reviewing cars since we were 12 and 16. We may be young, but we love cars. <laughs> and we'd love for you to subscribe to be a part of our Car Confections family. Let's learn a lot, have some fun with all the latest cars. 
All right, now let's go ahead and get on the inside. First, of course, take a quick look at the fob. You do have a smart entry system standard on this select sport trim level and above. That means getting inside, just grab behind the handle and that will unlock the door. Now, as far as the interior is concerned, you have a very premium cabin, really no matter which trim level you choose. And let's talk about what you get here with the select sport. This is going to upgrade you from the cloth on the base trim to the leatherette you see here. Um, so as you can tell, pretty nice looking seat. It is comfortable. This is a pretty realistic leatherette and you've got some stitching details as well. Black is going to be the only color option on this version. And then in terms of the seat controls themselves, these are gonna be a manual, uh, manual adjusting seats. You go up one more trim level, that's where you'll get the eight way power adjusting seats. But let's go ahead and get inside. And now that we've climbed inside, let's look at the rest of the materials. This is something that really impresses me because we've been in um, many of these Mazda 3s that cost perhaps $10,000 more, but the cabin is not really much different for this $25,000 version. We have a really nicely padded armrest with the leatherette covering and stitching. That same leatherette is going to be up here in the center section. And then along the top is a soft touch plastic. As you move to the upper dash, all of this is going to be padded, even the extreme upper parts. Leatherette through the center section with the stitching detail, and even leatherette padding along the center part of the tunnel for your knee to rest against. This is very premium for this class of car. Now let's go ahead and start it up with the push button start. All right, now that we fired it up, let's move into some of the individual details. We'll start with the gauge cluster. As you can tell, we do have a partially digital gauge cluster. This is a seven inch reconfigurable display. You can switch between a few different kinds of information on board. And if you choose a really um, upper end trim level, you can even get a head up display. Now, as we pull back, you'll notice we have rain sensing wipers. That's because this is included standard on all Mazdas. And we also have a nice leather wrap steering wheel on this version. This wheel will be manual tilt and telescoping, and then heating is available on your premium trim levels. Now let's turn over here, take a look at interior storage. So if we slide and fold back this center console, you're gonna find some stuffed donuts in there. That's because we're conducting the car confections donut test. And there are nine of those donuts inside of the center console. That's pretty impressive for a compact sedan in this class. I also wanna kinda of scoot them out of the way so you can see that we have USB-C's right there. And then up in the front, you'll find two cup holders and another nice storage area which can be configured as a wireless phone charging pad on higher tier examples. Now as far as the shifter, we have a nice traditional style, pull back for drive, bump to the left for manual shifting. There are not any paddles on the steering wheel. And then when we go into reverse, this is our standard backup camera. Um, this is what you're gonna find on pretty much all the models. As you can tell, we do have some guidelines, but they're not um, active in terms of your trajectory. And then back behind that, you have your electronic parking brake and brake hold function. And right in the same area, you'll notice you have the control knob, which is something for your infotainment system. You also have a volume knob for your audio systems. Now we have an eight speaker sound system. That's what's gonna be standard. You also have an available 12 speaker Bose sound system on higher end models. Let's sample the standard system though. Overall sound quality is very solid and certainly good for this uh, lower tier model. All right, let's get into our climate controls. Mazda does a good job of keeping climate controls nice and simple because they have physical buttons right here. This is gonna be a dual zone automatic climate control system as you can tell, and this is going to be included on all but the base trim level. We don't have heated seats on today's example. Those would be down here. Um, on one more trim level above, which is the preferred. And let's get into one of our most substantial 2024 updates. Now, it's not gonna be exactly available here on the uh, select sport trim level because we continue to have the 8.8 .8 inch display. 
But if you choose the turbo models, you're now going to get a 10 and a quarter inch display for 2024. Not only that, but that does come with additional functionality. First of all, it will be a touch screen, so you can use it as a touch screen, and it will also run wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Right now on this 8.8 inch display, we do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but they do require the wired connection via USB. Now up above, we have the manual dimming mirror. Got some nice LED interior lighting. And obviously, as you can tell, we don't have a sunroof, but one is available on your upper end models. All right, so let's talk about the Mazda 3's rear seat. Now, as far as this area is concerned, we have a very premium space for something in this segment. But first, I want to go ahead and talk about the actual space figures themselves. So Mazda says this is rated at about 35.1 inches of legroom, a little over 37 inches of headroom. I think those uh, measures are pretty darn accurate. I'm five foot nine for reference. This seat is adjusted to Drew, who's five foot eight. And here at Car Confections, we do want to provide you with all those measures. So, you know, sometimes the manufacturer's numbers can be a little off. And with those seat adjustments, we're sitting at about six inches of knee room, which I'm very happy with. And my feet can slide up underneath the seat. So certainly uh, reasonably sized adults can fit here in the rear seat of the Mazda 3 and have no issues whatsoever. Now, as far as other things I want to point out here in the center, no vents or anything on this particular trim level, no USB ports or anything along that regard. However, we do have a fold down center armrest with cup holders inside. That's something that the vast majority of the competition actually reserves for only the highest end trim levels. And then looking at your door trim, it's nicely done. Uh, we even have a soft touch plastic on the upper part, leatherette through the center section, leatherette in the armrest portion, and we have a little bit of bottle storage down in the very bottom. So I'm very surprised to see honestly that the materials do follow through from the front into the rear. Now let's go ahead and check out the cargo area for this Mazda 3 sedan. Now before we get any further, I do want to mention we haven't quite talked about this yet, but there is a Mazda 3 hatchback version. So if you want ultimate cargo practicality, maybe look at the Mazda 3 hatch. But do keep in mind that's a very different vehicle than this overall. So that will be covered in a separate review. Now, as far as this area is concerned, 13.2 cubic feet is the cargo capacity rating. That is actually a very good rating for this segment. It's not necessarily class leading, but it is very much class competitive. And as you can see, it is quite long and uh, the seats do fold 60-40 split folding, which I'm happy to see. Here at Car Confections, like I have been saying, we like to get all those measures for you. So I'll go ahead and get the cargo length. We are sitting at 42 inches long from the rear seats to the end of the cargo area. And then as far as the cargo opening, we're sitting at about 36 inches wide. So those are your cargo figures. Um, overall, pretty darn impressive in this Mazda 3. And I like that we even have a handle to shut the trunk. All right, it's time to get out on the road with this Mazda 3. Of course, during this test drive, we're gonna get a lot of things, starting with a hard acceleration. All right, there's an acceleration up to about 55 miles an hour, a little bit spoiled by this red light, but it goes to show you what's under the hood of this Mazda 3. So we have the base engine set up. As we've talked about throughout this review, this is a pretty affordable sedan, especially as tested today. It's going to be a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, 191 horsepower on board. Now, of course, you can get the more powerful uh, turbo model, but uh, this is just a standard engine setup. And for a small sedan like this, I think it's a perfectly adequate powertrain setup. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, in this class, most things are making uh, substantially less power. Mazda actually, I believe it was just last year, they um, changed the structure where they got rid of the base engine. So you're always kind of upgraded automatically um, in essence now. But if you want the big power, of course, you can still get the turbo models making 250 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque on premium fuel. So that obviously kind of transitions yeah. it into a luxury performance sedan. Um, and we have tested those out in the past. So if you want to check out um, our impressions of the turbo models specifically, you can find that on the channel right now. But in terms of the standard engine, like we said, really is a great starting point in the lineup. 
Yeah, and I will say when you choose that turbo model, the price does inflate into the $30,000 price point. So you're looking at more of maybe a um, mainstream luxury alternative type of vehicle as opposed to a typical uh, compact sedan. And you might also be noticing the other aspect of the powertrain, which is a six-speed automatic transmission. That's going to be standard across all Mazda 3 sedans. Um, it's a good transmission. You've heard us say it in other Mazda reviews. Um, yes, six speeds is less than most of the competition, which will either be coming with an eight-speed automatic or a CVT. Uh, but precisely, I think, a six-speed automatic is much better than a CVT. I'd much rather have this set up. And although it may take a little bit of a second to kick down, um, I really don't have much of an issue with this transmission whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it's overall very smooth. And just in general, this vehicle, because of the, the engine type, um, the power on board, and the fact that it's not a continuously variable transmission really means that you never have those situations where it sounds so strained, like some of the competition that really is kind of straining to get up to speed. All right, so we're going to climb up to 55 miles an hour and get our signature sound level reading. Give it a nice long time to sample there. It looks like we ended up at 64 decibels on this cold, windy day. Now, as far as how that compares to the rivals, we don't have to sit here and guess because we can actually go to carconfections.com slash sound level readings to compare this Mazda 3 to all those other mini rivals like the Honda Civic and Toyota Corolla. And as far as how that lands, that does land it as uh, one of the louder options in the segment. However, I will just point out we are under a wind advisory today, so um, there is a lot of wind blowing around, so that is certainly impacting our sound level reading a little little bit, uh, but do keep in mind that this is probably not going to be the quietest option in the compact segment. I think there's also a fair chance that they're changing sound deadening levels depending on the trim level. I don't think they were officially said that, but we've gotten much lower um, numbers on higher end models. Now, if you watch some of our recent Mazda content, you know that all wheel drive is now standard on all of their SUVs. For the sedans though, you can also get all wheel drive on the Carbon, Carbon Turbo, and Premium Plus Turbo. Those are the ones that are gonna have standard all wheel drive in 2024. And let's talk a little bit about fuel economy because you do have some different powertrain varieties. You're gonna have a, a wide assortment of different fuel economies. Most models though, including this one, 2.5 front wheel drive will be 28 city, 37 highway, 31 combined. But let's go ahead and just talk about one of my favorite things about the Mazda 3, and that is your driving dynamics. Now, if you've seen a lot of Mazda content, you've probably heard reviewers mention how good Mazda steering setup is, and that, of course, is going to transfer over to this compact Mazda 3 model. Um, it is one of, if not the best in the entire segment. This and the Honda Civic are pretty close for best dynamically speaking, and the steering is just absolutely phenomenal. It really feels uh, pleasant to drive, which is something that can't be said out of the vast majority of the competition, especially if you're looking at something like a Toyota Corolla. I would highly recommend getting a Mazda 3 if you care anything about driving dynamics. All right, and let's go ahead and get into our air ball and slam dunk, our favorite element and our least favorite element about this Mazda 3. Drew, do you want to kick us off with the slam dunk? So the slam dunk really is just going to be the sheer amount of stuff you get for $25,000. Um, this really is a fantastic deal. We already, you know, raved about the driving dynamics. The uh, cabin experience is really quite premium for the price point. And the overall look of this, this looks like just a much more expensive vehicle than it is. Yeah, and as far as our air ball is concerned, um, really there's not a lot to complain about, especially considering this price point. But one of the things that I would have certainly liked to have seen uh, standard on all models is the upgraded 
10.25 inch technology upgrades for 2024. Um, you know, if you compare this to some of the rivals, they are going to be giving you slightly more user intuitive technology. This is something that Mazda typically struggles with. Um, and while this isn't necessarily bad, it's just I wish they had included that 10.25 in all models. Lastly here, let me go ahead and mention the warranty of three year, 36,000 miles on your basic side and five year, 60,000 miles on the powertrain side. And let's talk pricing for this Mazda 3 sedan. So prices are gonna rise around $1,000 for 2024, but do keep in mind you are getting a lot more standard features as we talked about throughout this review. Now, as far as the base price, that's starting at 24,170, however, I don't know why you'd get the base model because this select sport trim level is so affordable. It only goes up in price around $500. So you're starting at $24,690 plus our destination charge, we're sitting at $25,855. So incredible value with this trim level. Of course, as you go up the trim structure, you can get this to be mid $30,000 price point if you choose the fully loaded models. Uh, but do keep in mind those more compete with luxury vehicles. And if you're looking to buy a Mazda 3 or any new vehicle, we would encourage you to go to carconfections.com slash newcarquotes. On our website, we have a tool that will connect you to local dealers in your area to get you the best price on your new vehicle. It's also going to give you access to invoice pricing information, which is a great tool for dealer negotiation. If you'd like to take advantage of that, a link is provided in our video description. And guys, that's going to be where we leave off on this in-depth review of the 2024 Mazda 3 sedan. Of course, there were quite a few changes for this model. So if you enjoyed hearing about those changes and want to learn more, we would encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. That's something that we do here at Car Confections. We do the model year to model year changes so you know and are most informed about the new vehicles on the market. If you're a fan and subscriber already, thank you so much for your continued support. Thank you for being a part of our family. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.